everybody. Welcome to the Adobe Fonts Show, episode 44, Variable yeah. Fonts for the Web. Yes. Welcome all. Welcome. How's everyone doing? Yes, let us know how you're doing in the chat. I see we already have some people in there, which is great. Yeah. Hi, everyone who's already here. Wade, thanks for being our moderator. Mm -hmm. Umacorn, Annika, Jack, some of our best friends are in the chat already. Hi, Oliver. Let us know where you're from. And if you're on YouTube watching us, go over to behance.net slash live. That's where we're looking at the chat. So if you have any questions, we'll be able to answer or any comments. And we can only see them on Behance. So come over there. Yes. And um, I wanted to introduce myself for those of you that might not know me. I'm Ari, the library manager for Adobe Fonts. My team works with all the Foundry partners that design the fonts that are included in your Creative Cloud subscription. We currently have over 150 partners and we consistently add fonts to expand the library. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm Ben. I'm a content producer at Adobe Fonts. I started out in support answering a lot of questions about fonts over the years and then started making things like this stream and other videos. And I wanna help you get the most out of fonts in Creative Cloud. So let me know if you have any questions. And if you're new to Adobe Fonts, I don't think we have anyone that new to Adobe Fonts in the audience, but if we do, Adobe Fonts is a library of over 20,000 fonts that you can use for both personal and commercial use. And so if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you just activate the fonts and you're able to use them right away. It's very, very straightforward. If you don't know where to start, check out the recommendations page at fonts.adobe.com and you'll be able to, you'll see a bunch of beautiful images there of different fonts and you'll be able to get started right away. So super easy. Yeah, and here on our show, we talk about all things fonts and have great workshops with professionals in the type world. And if you like the show, subscribe to Adobe Live on YouTube and follow Adobe Fonts on Behance. You can be updated on all future episodes that way. And you can also watch replays of previous episodes. There's a lot of good stuff in there. And let us know if you have any suggestions too. You can write to us on Behance for that. Yes. So should we jump in? We have a few more people in the chat that joined. Yes, we have a, um, a quick poll for everyone who's here right now. Have you used Adobe Fonts for a website? I know I have. Ari, have you? Never. Never before? Wow. That's why I'm here. I need to learn. Okay, good. Well, I am I will be able to help you through this. Uh, we'll get through this together. We can handle through it. Through this difficult time. Yeah, it's, it's way easier than it seems. So no problem. Um, but let us know That's in good. the chat if you've used Adobe Fonts for a website before. Um, uh, once, no, several times. If if it's more than several, I mean, I guess use D or just say it's even more. You've used it a hundred times. I don't know. But <laughs> right now, I think these will be good. Tian says yes. Oliver says no. Tian says several times. Okay. That's cool. Okay, we so got we a have mix. some web designers. Yeah. Or people who dabble in web. Jessica says no. So that's good. We have a little mix okay, good. of different people, So for those of you who have abilities. used them, today's episode might still be useful because these are variable fonts. And for those of you who haven't, today's episode will be useful because we'll show you how to add fonts to a website uh, the same way. So it's pretty similar. All right. The topic for today is variable fonts for the web. There is a link in the description of this video on YouTube and on Behance that has a template file that has a very simple website, an HTML, CSS, and a little image file. It's very simple. And if you wanna follow along with us or just mess around with that at any time, it's a little simple website that you can kind of experiment with adding fonts to. Um, and we're gonna take you through that here today. So if you wanna follow along, download that template. And uh, yeah, let us know if you have any questions as we go. Okay, should we dive in? Yes. Excellent. So dive. when you get the template, you're gonna see if you open the index.html file in your browser, it can be any browser, whatever you use, you'll see a very simple site with just basic styling, nothing fancy. 
And this is just using the default web font that's available uh, in most, most browsers is Georgia. So this is just using Georgia, no fancy web fonts so far, and just basic styling. So you get the idea. It's not fun. It's not fun, even though it's trying to claim to be fun. It's just really not. I don't believe it. And then what we're going to do is make the website look like this, which looks more fun than the other one. And so you'll see the header there is doing this little yeah. kind of expanding, kind of breathing animation. And when you <gasps> and when you hover over the links here, they get bold. Uh, but it kind of animates bold rather than just flipping. It's kind of nice. And then for the fun one, when you hover over fun, it gets even more fun. So that's very Ooh. exciting. So we're going to talk through first just adding web fonts and variable fonts to the site. And then we're going to go through these different animations um, and how you can kind of experiment with them. So yeah, that's that. When you download... We have someone asking if this is live, this... Crystal Ball. It is live. It is live. It will also be saved. Just to confirm. Yes. It is live. It will also be saved so you can watch it later. Okay. When you download it, you'll see this folder in your downloads folder. When you open it, this is the these are the three files that you see. And when you double click this, it'll open in your browser. And then you need some way to edit the uh, index.html file and the CSS style.css file. So I'm going to use something called Atom, which looks like this. A-T-O-M. It's free. And it is a code editor that you that is from GitHub and it's open source. So if you want to download this and mess around with this, that way you can do that. If you have your own code ed editor, feel free. If you have no code editor and you're on a Mac, you can use text edit, which is just a plain text editor. And if you're on a PC, you can use notepad and you'll be able to edit these files just with notepad or text edit. So is uh, there a reason why you prefer Atom over text edit? Yes. So Atom is going to give us some color coding based on the language that we're using. So for HTML and CSS, it's going to give us some little affordances with, with how it colors different things and lays out things that are appropriate for those languages. So you'll see that when I open up these files. Another nice thing about uh, Atom is that you can drop, drag and drop a project file and then all your files are right here in the sidebar. And I have the finished site here as well, in case I need to make any references to that. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you the index.html file really quick um, so you can get a sense of what it looks like. I'm going to add some wrapping so we can see this a little better, come on. Well, we can see it better that way, okay. So I close the sidebar. So you'll see here, this is a basic HTML file and you'll see it's color coded, which is another nice thing about using a code editor made for editing code. Um, and you'll see all of the elements that are here are listed here. You'll see this H1 is the variable fonts on the web and that's right here. And you'll see the navigation, home about blog co contact. And you'll see this little paragraph text and this little unordered list, which is this bullet points here and then of course the fun and then we have the image and a little caption down at the bottom so pretty straightforward and you can kind of mess around with this and edit this as much as you want and then you'll see up here i have this uh part that just says add web project code here and we're going to figure out what that is in a few minutes uh, once we dive into finding stuff on the adobe font site okay uh, and then Wade, I think, has the links for these articles. I just wanted to share these really fast. Um, there are, are a couple things that I came across while I was looking into this that I thought might be useful. There's an introduction to variable fonts on the web from web.dev uh, that I think would be worth a look through. A lot of cool examples, a lot of detail in here, but uh, could probably breeze through and find the information that you need. There's another one from ABC Dynamo that has uh, some variable font explanations, how to use them on websites. Uh, how to add them, and then also has these little interactive things where you can mess around with the variable fonts a little bit in the browser, which is nice. But then it also has these cool animations that are done with variable fonts. So that's an on hover. And then down here, we have this one that's just kind of animating through different widths and sizes and just kind of repeats itself. So that's kind of fun. This one was done with JavaScript. We're not going to get into JavaScript today, just CSS. Uh, but you can do more complicated um, you can do more complicated stuff with JavaScript like this one, 
changes based on where my mouse is, which is kind of fun. So you could do yeah, that for the really cool. for the header of your site. And as you get closer to the header, it could get really bold or something like that. So kind of fun. And Wade's going to uh, put the links for all these articles uh, in the chat as well. Then this one is, I used this to do that kind of breathing thing. So this one's done with JavaScript here. This one, uh, it allows you to animate the individual letters. But this one down here is done with just CSS. And so that's kind of the code that we used to do that for the header in the example site. And then finally, what can my font do is a site that allows you to figure out what your font can do, what that font can do. And so um, I'm going to show you this really fast. If you open up. In case up, you were wondering how to spell what can my font do, this yes. is how you spell it. What can my font in do? In English. Yeah. So if you open up font book and you're able to find uh, a font, I downloaded source serif 4, which is open source. So I can do this. I can show it in the finder. And then I can drag one of these source serif 4 fonts onto that site. And it's going to tell me a whole bunch of cool stuff about what this font is capable of. It's going to show me variable uh, axes and things that I can change in the variable font. It's going to show me how to use alternate sets. It even has these little animations to change things with the variable axes down here. Very cool. Shows you a whole bunch of stuff. So check out what can my font do. And but uh, we can't do that with fonts from when you get them from our service, right? Just if you have it downloaded. Yes, just if it's a font file you have downloaded because you have to drag it onto this page. Mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, fun to do to experiment with a lot of a lot of fonts are open source now so you can do it with those and any fonts that you've licensed this site doesn't keep the font or steal it or anything so if you've purchased a font and you want to check out what it can do this site uh, will be very useful so there is that okay we're going to dive into the adobe font site and start working on how variable fonts work okay yeah, and maybe we should say what variable fonts are in case Ooh. people have missed that. Because yes. Because it's pretty recent. We have a re recent episode that you can watch when we introduce them to our Yes, service. check out our BNs. We have a variable fonts episode when we introduce them. And then we talked to two Foundry partners about variable fonts for a little bit more detail and a little bit more insight into the process of making them. So check those out. A variable font is basically the current font format that is being worked on and used widely and is being used more widely as time goes on. And what it, I don't know if I have a good definition off the top of my head, but I would say that it basically combines all of the different variations of a font, like bold, weight, italic, these other things into one font file. And then those different versions are kind of um, interpolate. It's called interpolation, but basically they're blended. You blend between the smallest, thinnest version and then you blend all the way to the very tallest version. And you can kind of see what that, that blending looks like here when I drag this, this handlebar here, right? Everything in between. So instead of just having font weight 200, 300, 400, we have everything in between, right? We go all the way from 200 to 900 and anything in between. And basically that's what that interpolation is doing. So built into the font is every step between each version of these letters through every single character, which is kind of insane when you think about it. So, yeah, and it gives you a lot more control yes. over the exact version that you want to use yeah. instead of having to choose through a drop down, a regular, semi bold, bold. You can find something in between there. Yes. Um, and weight is only one attribute that could be included in a variable font. For example, you could have, you could have something more abstract like style, which is shown here. So we could add a little and bit then, of style or a lot of style. <laughs> and then I think your next tab has regular yes. open, which has actually multiple axes. So each of these axes represents what would normally be separate font files. So instead of having the italic files separate, you can actually look at all three of those attributes, all three of those axes and move them to points that produce what would normally be a separate font. Yeah. And you get really fine tuned. And you get control over all of those aspects. So you could think mm -hmm. of the axis as just a, a particular property of the, of the font, right? It's weight, italic. Now, in some cases, the italic is just kind of on or off. 
-hmm. But some fonts, um, like for example, we go to Acumen variable. Acumen variable has a slant option that is progressive. So you can actually choose mm. how much italic you want, which is also very yeah. cool. So not all variable fonts have the same axes or options, but this gives you an idea of some of the capabilities. And some have wacky ones and fun ones, and some are very useful, straightforward, like slant width. In this case, we control the width here. We can go from condensed all the way to wide or super wide, and then we can control the, the weight. So very cool. So that's variable fonts. And then how do you use them on your website? Well, that's what yeah. we're going to talk about today. And why? And why would you want to? So yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. Why well, do you want to do that? Well, one of the reasons is that you can do those animations, which are really cool. And you can't do those with normal fonts. Another reason is that if you're using quite a few fonts, every one of those font files is being served to your browser when you download the website. But in the case of Aglet mono variable, it's just one font file. So instead of having a 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, all the separate font files, we only have one font file that can then be styled without needing extra font files. Mm. So that's another reason is for performance. Now, if you're only using one weight of one font, chances are it would be better to just use that one weight of that one font because that's just one font file. But a lot of sites use several fonts and several weights because you want the italic, the regular, bold, bold italic. That's four That's four font files right there. So that's yeah. another good reason to try it out. So if you have too many fonts on your website, would that slow down for the end user? Like It will affect performance for sure. So the more fonts you have, the, the longer it's going to take to download them. You'd probably yeah. have to add quite a few. Well, yeah, even with a few fonts, you can notice a little blink at the beginning of the site where maybe you control the font doesn't display text until the fonts are downloaded, in which case the site, it looks blank for like a very short second. But if you added mm -hmm. a bunch of fonts, it might look blank for a while, or it might show up as looking like this and then suddenly switch to this after the fonts get downloaded. And the flash of unstyled text. Yes, nobody likes the flash of unstyled text. So we don't want that. Yeah. And I think with so many websites being retail stores, mm -hmm. um, being really important for business, if you if your website is lagging, is having a flash of unstyled text, making it look less professional, if it's slow, that's dollars on the line. Very much so. so. If you're selling something on your site and it's slow, no good. So yeah. this can help no with that. No one has the patience. And also I would say that for retails, I mean, most retail websites are almost like apps, right? You're clicking through this whole checkout thing. You're making accounts. You're doing all these things on these sites. And sometimes little, you know, little details like this, or like uh, this has an example in it. Um, there's these fonts that are used here that are actually these different animations. And you could see these being very useful. Mm -hmm. in the site, right? Just subtle, but really helpful. So things like that yeah. are also possible. So performance, animation, UI, there's a lot of things that just can, yeah, both on the just technical side, make things faster and then make things more visually aligned with the brand or style or, you know, things like that. So it's good stuff. Okay. But how do we get these Ooh. fonts on a website? That's the big question. Well, there's a little yeah. button right here called add to web project. Oh, I'm going to move my head really fast so you can see it better. There you go. Add to web project. So we're going to do that. And you can create a new one or add to an existing one. I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to create new and I'm going to type Adobe fonts show episode 44. Okay. And I'm going to click create. Now, before I do that, I just want to show you tells you a little bit of information about the variable font axes that you can use with this font. And it lets you choose which of these you want to add. Do you want to add the italic and the regular? In this case, yes, we do. So we're going to click create. And then now it's going to give us a little bit of code and you can get back to this later. So no need to get it now, but we're going to get it now because it's right here. So at the very top here 
is the embed code to use in the HTML file. So I'm just going to click this to copy it. And now I'm going to go over here and that little area where it said add web project code here. I'm just going to copy that and paste in what I just uh, added. And now I'm going to click mm -hmm. save. That's it. Now Aglet Nova mono or Aglet mono variable is being at, is added to the site. That's all I had to do. So that's kind of cool. Now, and all you have to be is a subscriber. You just have to have an Adobe ID. Yep. Right. Yep. And then Aglet mono variable is part of our paid library. So you have to pay for some plan of Creative Cloud yes. to access it. But we also have fonts that are part of the free library that you can use for this. Yes. So there's nothing else that you need to do, right? You just have to well, have an account login. Yes. That's it. Have an account login and add font to web project. Oh, do you mean in terms of getting the fonts on the site? Yeah, I'm just thinking like if I want to just have my own little personal site and add a variable font to it, yep. can I do that tomorrow? Is there anything else besides kind of learning a little more about no. um, how to do If you do have this? a Creative Cloud subscription, if you have an Adobe Fonts account, you can do it. Yeah. That's it. All I need is my brain to learn how to do it. That's right. And I can do that. Yes, you can. We're going to do it right now. <laughs> okay. And let us know if you have any questions as we're going along. Um, please let us know. This is open. It's live. We're here to just feed off of you if you want us to take it in a different direction or wherever. Know, besides, you know, Bren has stuff to show. Yes. But if there's a specific question, we're happy to pause and answer. Indeed. Okay. So we added the fonts to the site. So I'm going to go back to the site and refresh. But of course, nothing's changed yet because it's not fun yet. No, because we need to use the CSS to tell the browser to use the new font that we just added. OK, so that's step one is adding the embed code to the head of the document, which again, we see right here. So now we're going to open style.css, which I will do. I'm going to save this and open style.css. And at the very top, you'll see I have a little commented thing here that says add variable font CSS here. OK, mm -hmm. so let's go back to our site and let's look at this. What is this? OK, these are these are the basic settings that we had in the browser when we decided to add this font to a project. You'll see that wait 447 is exactly what's right here. So they're the same. So mm -hmm. I can also just grab the default instance, which I'll do here, which is 400. And so all I have to do is click this button here to copy the CSS for this particular variation of Aglet Mono. So now I'm going to go to the CSS and I'm going to add that here. And you'll see what that looks like. So we have font family Aglet Mono variable, which is telling the browser to use that font family, which we just added with our web project. And then we're saying font variation settings for weight 400, which is the regular weight. Great. So now let's go back to the site. Wait, did I save that? No, I did not save. And I'm going to refresh. And now you'll see mm. Aglet mono variable is being used for all of the text. Okay. All the way down to the bottom. So the body text. Do I need to do a little bit about HTML and CSS? Would that be helpful? I'm just going to point out a couple things. Here you'll see body. You see that here. That's an element in CSS. Mm -hmm. The body contains all of the stuff that's on the website. So anything inside this body tag, here's the bottom of it. Anything in here shows up on the site. Anything yeah. in the head of the tag is kind of, uh, it, these are links and things that have to do with the metadata of the site or links to CSS files like we're doing here with style.css and to the, to the uh, Adobe Fonts CSS style sheet. So mm -hmm. that is what's in the head. And then anything in the body is what shows up on the site. You'll see body here. And then you'll see in the CSS, I'm targeting the body. So this is saying the body should have padding and margin, which is basically room around the different, the body element. So you'll see, oh, I can't show you the previous because 
I already changed it, but I can get rid of those things, whatever. Okay, so, and then you'll see H2 fun down here is targeting this H2 fun, and I'll show you where that is. That's right here, H2, mm -hmm. right? And then these are targeting the links, and then this is targeting the image, and then this is tar targeting the navigation. And so that's that. I have a couple more things uh, commented out here so that you can just uncomment them and see what they do and then experiment with them because this is the code for the animations, which we'll also go through. So now that I added that, we have basically the fonts are working. It was that simple. We're only 26 minutes in and we have the fonts working on the site. I mean, our job is done. So let's just party, I guess. No, there's more. There's more. Um, okay, so what else do we want to do? We want to create an animation for this, um, the, the H1 at the top, the variable fonts on the web. We want that to do that breathing animation. So I'm going to uncomment that. And in order to uncomment, I just have to get rid of these, this star, this asterisk in brackets around these elements. And now you'll see that this code becomes active. Mm -hmm. And you'll see here, <clears throat> font variation settings, weight 100. So that's giving it the smallest weight that you can. And then this animation, this is the title of the animation. It's called Breathe. You can call this anything you want. So we could call this Awesome. But we would have to change Awesome down here because those, those keyframes are referencing this animation. We want it to go over four seconds and we want it to go infinite forward. So it just keeps going back and forth. And then we're saying that for the breathe animation, 60% of it is weight 700 and 100% of it is weight 100. And then I'm going to save that and we're going to go back here and just see what happens. Ta-da! So that's... How can 60% 60, 60 of it be one thing and 100% of it be another thing? So the keyframes is referring to um the the steps in the animation i'm not exactly sure how this works to be totally honest so it's not math <laughs> it's not exactly math or at least how it's working is is a little bit beyond me but i yeah. do know that this is the weight at the end of the animation and this is the weight at the beginning and so i could change this to 200 or 600 or 500 and save and then we can see what that does and so I think what's going to happen is that it's going to go back down and then do you see how it pauses there and then yeah. resets? Yeah. We don't like that. So it always goes back to the very thin weight. So the, so what the keyframes is saying is that at 60% of the animation, which is halfway through the enemy, which is almost oh. halfway through the animation, it should be at a hundred percent. It should be at weight 700. And then when it's fully done with the animation, it should be at weight 100, which is what we want because the original weight is 100. Yeah. So if we want that to, to start at 500 and then still do the breathing thing, but not do that little janky thing, then we can do that. And now it's just going to go from 500 to 700. Too subtle. Too subtle. Yeah. So let's change it back to 100 and let's see. Yeah, we like that. So that's how we did the animation for the breathe. If anyone has any questions about that, let me know. Ooh, Wade posted. Yeah, and you got that from one of the links that Wade also posted. Yes, yeah, so I got that from this CSS in real life. Mm -hmm. And you can see this is the basic CSS for the animation right here. So I used a, the, I used a very similar idea that, that is here. And this one actually animates the width as well because that's available in this font which is really cool. So this article is very useful and worth checking out if uh, if you want to dive in a little bit more. But this is this is what helped me figure out how to do that um, initial animation. And it talks a little bit yeah. a little bit more about how that works. So let's see. Okay. We have our animation working. And now I want to show how we can create uh, an animation for the or i want to explain the code that does the animation for these um anchor tags in fact i'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little better so you can see that that animates to bold instead of just flipping to bold yeah so this is i'm targeting our navigation here 
So we have navigation and then we have these anchor tags. An anchor tag is a link tag in HTML. So you can see in the in the style.css, I'm choosing navigation anchors. So any link tags that are in the navigation, I'm setting their font size and I'm giving them a weight of 100, which you can see is the starting point. And I could change this to 200 if I wanted and then refresh. And they should, it should I don't know if that did anything. Give me a second. <coughs> And then, okay, this is a little bit different than the keyframes. For this, we're specifying in the anchor that we want a transition of one second. And then we're targeting the hover state of the link tags and saying, make the weight 700. So it's gonna make it 700 over one second. So let's look at that. So it takes one second. And it stays like that. Until you move your mouse until you move. Because okay. that's the hover state. So we could make this, let's see, 0 0.2 seconds. And then when we refresh, this should be fast, a lot faster. I think that's better, actually. I think I like that better too. It's more noticeable. Yeah. It's too, it's not as interactive when it's the other way. So that's that. So we can make the transition faster. And again, all we have to do is write transition and give it a time in seconds. And yeah. then we add what we want to change. So we could probably also change the font size. I've never, I haven't done this before, so bear with me. We could change the font size to 2 EM and see if that actually animates. Yes, it oh. does. <laughs> a little wonky, doesn't look quite. If you had a website that had a lot of visitors it would be interesting to test um do an a b test or change it like each day and see how many people click on something if it takes one second to animate versus 0 0.5 seconds if it changes sizes like all of these things could really change interaction i agree with your site i think one of the one of the coolest things to do would be to you know do some of these things and then watch someone use your website and yeah. see what they do and see how they interact with them. See if they're confused, if they're able to find things, things are clear, really good stuff. Um, but like this, I wouldn't do because, <laughs> you know, it moves it, it moves the whole website down when you hover over these. Yeah. <laughs> so we'd have to finesse this a little bit in order to make it work right. But again, you could also see that you could animate the color. You could animate the font size, obviously. And if it's if it's a font that has other axes, you could animate those as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay. I'm and gonna... for those of you that joined more recently, um, we talked a little about what variable fonts are, but you can watch previous replays of our live streams where we introduce variable fonts, but the axes are different attributes that you can, um, change really fine tune. Yeah. So in this case, we have the weight axis that we are choosing. And this one has a style axis, which you can see here. Yeah. So these are the different parts of a variable font that you can manipulate and or change. Um, whether that's in Photoshop or Illustrator or on the web. So good stuff. Okay, we're also going to add this font because if you'll remember in the finished version, we have that fun animation going. Mm -hmm. And so we want to add another font. So I'm going to... I'm going to set this to zero style here, and I'm going to add to web project. And now I already created the other web project, which is right here. So I'm going to add it to that. And I'm going to click save. And then I can actually go into edit project, which will open this project in all of its glory and detail. Now I don't need the embed code anymore because I've already added this project to the site. Okay. But I'm gonna... Is there a limit to the amount of fonts you can add to one web project? You could probably add hundreds if you really wanted to. But again, you would start to see performance issues. And managing that amount of fonts in one uh, folder or one web project would be very uh, tedious. Uh, because mm -hmm. generally speaking, you probably want to use about four different fonts on a site, uh, give or take. So you probably have a regular, a bold, a bold italic and an italic for that's probably what you need for all of your body copy maybe you don't even need the bold italic maybe just the regular italic and bold 
but maybe you have a font for your logo or font for your branding that you also use for headers. So that might mm -hmm. be your fourth. And that fourth one, if you wanted to be able to change its width and, and weight a little bit, a variable font would be perfect for that. So I would say keep it about four fonts if you can. Um, as a good rule of thumb. However, if you need a few more fonts, that's probably not going to be too big of an issue. But 20 fonts is going to slow down your site to a, yeah. to a noticeable degree. We won't judge you, but if you add 20... I will say this, a good practice when you're messing around with a website to begin with, add all of the fonts you want to the web project so that you can quickly experiment in your CSS with different fonts and different looks. And then once you figure out what you want, you can remove fonts from your web project and just end up using the ones that you really like. So that's another thing that you can do. Um, and you can remove a web family just by looking at this little trash can. So easy. Okay, so we're going to go down here and look at June accept variable. Is that accept? Accept um, or expt? I think it's expt. I always forget what that means. Hmm. It has a meaning. I'm going to go with June accept for now <laughs> because even without the E in the middle, it still looks like that. So we'll go with that for now. Um, and you can see that the one attribute that we have here is this style tag, and we're, we want it to start in its normal zero. So we are going to copy the CSS for that. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to find, you'll see here, I have this blocked out so that uh, you can still see the code, but I'm going to get rid of this, these comments, and I'm just going to replace this with the code that we got from there. This is just giving us the font variation. So we actually mm -hmm. need the font family as, as well. And we have that right up here. So I'm just going to grab that really fast and add that as well, because we need both of those things. We need a font family decor declaration and we need font variation settings to tell it what, what part of the variable font that we want to use. So now when so I, if, if you wanted it to start with a different not not at zero mm -hmm. like if you wanted it to be the opposite it starts with the curious yeah style and it goes to active yep. do you have to change something on our website or can you just do it in your editor so you can just do it here and that's worth experimenting you just flip with the numbers so i could just say um 200 oh no 20. there's no take there it is, to 11. there is no 200. um so I'll, let's just try 20. Now, one thing you can do if you want to know what it's going to look like beforehand is come to our site here and get you can the, just type in 20 get the exact look at that you, the bottom. That's true. But you can also just get the exact look that you want. Let's say we want yeah. 27. And then when you click copy CSS here, I'll show you what that looks like at the top. Just to clean things up. I'll show you what that looks like. 27. Mm. So that will give you the exact look that you have on the Adobe font site if you want to do it that way, which I think is useful if you're more of a visual person. That said, you can just keep experimenting. So we'll change this to 27 just to see what happens. And then we'll refresh the site. And now you'll see that fun is looking um, a little more fun. Wouldn't you yeah. say? It starts out a little more fun and then gets more fun. Yes. And then I have this on hover which makes it as fun as it can be. And then let's go back. Now we're going to mess around with that a little bit. I'm going to show you that's the same. That's been, that's being done in the same way as the links were done with this transition under the H2 link a, and then, and then on hover, we add font variation style 100. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to change this again to 0 0.5 seconds to make it even faster. And we're gonna go all the way from zero to 100 in 0.5 seconds. That's gonna be very exciting. Whoa, did you see that? Very fast, very cool. Yes. But now we're gonna do 10 seconds. Let's just see what that looks like. This is gonna be hilarious. Okay. Whoa. Mm. Very exciting. 
So maybe it's more of a Zen version of fun. Yeah, maybe you wouldn't want to do this for anything interactive, but maybe slow animations like that would be good for like background elements or something like that. Right? Yeah. We don't want that to be too distracting, but we want. I want it to change colors. Okay, let me see Maybe. if I can change the color. So let's do. I want to see that. H2A. Let's change the color to. Let's make it pink and see what happens. There we go. And then on hover, let's change. I don't know if. I don't know if color is animated in CSS. We're, we're, we're doing live experimentation right now. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Let us know if you know. What do we want to change it to? How about um, blue for lack of blue. a better? I was going to say that. You were? Wow. Yeah. We're so in sync. Okay. Oh my gosh. <gasps> it does it like a gradient. It totally did it like a gradient. That's really cool. That was very cool. Okay, let's make it so happen. When faster. we first asked, like, who's used our, who's used Adobe Fonts on the web? I think it was Tion that said yes. So let us know if this, if you're learning something new today, or if you have any questions, um, since you've done this before. Yeah. And those of you that haven't done this before, is this something you would experiment with? Do you have any questions or do you want to see something specific um, that we try out? Yeah, let us know. And uh, if you download that um, the template file and you're working through this and you do have any questions, shoot us a message on Behance, Adobe Fonts. It's behance.net slash Adobe Fonts and we will answer you there. So let me know. It's good stuff. Yes. So Uma Korn says, I thought you'd have to use hex codes for the colors. Um, Jake says CSS has a bunch of built-in color names. So, and then Oliver said you can use either. Um, so I'm wondering, I'm sure there's a specific hex code that, yeah, here you go. Yeah. So according to CSS, mm -hmm. blue is this blue. Yes, and so this, if you come to this site, uh, this is W3 Schools, I just searched CSS color names or CSS colors. But this gives you all of the act, the little names, like bisque. Blanched almond. Blanched wow, almond, this is like beige. house paint colors. I didn't realize it would be so detailed. Azure. Aqua. Aqua white. Oh, antique white, not aqua white. That was confusing. Could... Burly wood. I want to know who made up these color names. Yeah, also, this doesn't look very chocolate to me. Am I wrong? Um... You're not wrong. Okay. It's even lighter than milk chocolate. That's what I'm saying. But okay. Corn dark silk. Dark gray. Wait, dark gray and dark gray. Like British Ooh, and American. But they have the same code. <laughs> nice. So it's just showing you like a British person, an American person could type in this preferred spelling and they'd get the same thing. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to try deep pink real quick. Wow, who knew that so much went into these names? So now that's deep pink, and it changes to blue. Oh, that went really quick. I made it faster while you weren't looking. I want it to be gradual so I can see the gradient change. Okay, we're going to do five seconds. <laughs> that's pretty fun. Not to toot my own that's horn. That's really cool. <laughs> but... but but I think that exclamation point was in order. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> very fun. Yes. Yes. Very exciting. Um, Clever said when you said the color, now I don't even know how to pronounce it, as azure. Azure. <laughs> it sounded like you were saying azure. I, I guess it's like azure or azure. I don't know. Azure. I think I said azure. I think I said azure. <laughs> it was like the soup du jour. Soup azure. Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. Also, w3schools.com is also very helpful if you want to do anything um, HTML, CSS related. Great search stuff, mm. all kinds of stuff, CSS references, etc. Uh, Umicorn asked me to slow it down. Okay, so I'm going to try to do that from here on out. Well, I just want to be clear about how we just did what we did 
for this little font animation. Okay. So in this, we're saying this H2, which I'm going to show you in the HTML here, this H2, and this is an, a link tag in the H2. That's an A, stands for anchor. Mm. We are going to have it be deep pink. We're giving it a font size. In fact, ooh, we can change the font size when we animate it too. Okay. We're going to go... It's going to double in font size. Oh my gosh. This is going to be really exciting. So we're giving it a font size. We're saying we want the font family to be June accept variable, which we added to our uh, web project. And then we want it to start. So we just want all this to start at style zero. But then we've added this transition tag. And the transition tag targets when you hover over something or hover mm -hmm. off of something so that we see the transition between those two things. And this is where we set the timing of that transition. And then down here, we select the hover state, which is what it looks like when you're hovering above it. And we've set the style to 100, the color to blue, and the font size to 10 EMs. So it's going to be huge. OK, let's see what happens. Very exciting. Um, our heads are in the way of the animation now. I think we should change it to Azure. <laughs> okay, let me do Azure really fast. Although it's going to be almost white. It's going to change to almost white when it gets big. Ooh, I like that. So as it gets big, it will change to almost white and it'll still be visible because it's going to get so big. Okay, let's try. Yeah. Ooh. Fun. Oh. I love that. That's pretty good. That's pretty fun. So you could imagine doing something like this with your logo. Not quite this drastic of a change, <laughs> but maybe when they hover over your logo, right? It mm -hmm. does a little something. Maybe it gets a little funkier or maybe it gets yeah. a little bolder or something like that. So Yeah. And does anyone let us know in the chat if you have any examples of websites that you know where you've gone and you've hovered over something and it animates? Um, I think it's always really cool. It gives me delight when I'm on a website and my interactions change something. Um, Wade asked, is there any way to control ease in and ease out? Looks like it's already built in. So yes, Wade, when you do the animations, when you define them by hand, like we did here, you can add uh, parameters for ease in and ease out in this keyframes section here. But the way that we're doing it with the hover is we're basically just doing uh, the standard ease in and ease out that's in the browser, mainly because generally for hover, we do want a little bit of that um, easing in and easing out. Um, but yes, there are, there are ways to fine tune and tweak it. I don't have them here in these examples, but in the articles that I linked to, uh, there's more details about how to control the various aspects. And really fast, just one other, thing to show again um the the bottom example on this site where is it it changes wherever your mouse is so you could see this like maybe the the home button on the site as you get closer to it gets bigger or maybe the logo gets bigger as you get closer to it instead of smaller like it's doing here right things like that that could be really useful animation or just something fun to add to your site just something with a little visual interest and it could be subtle too. Some of these animations don't have to be so drastic. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly not as drastic as this. <laughs> um, this is a little bit insane, but nonetheless, I like how it turned out. We need to illustrate what's possible. Indeed. We're, we're trying, we're trying to show you everything that's possible here. So <laughs> that is how you do some animations in CSS with variable fonts. Ooh, cool. Jason just said yes with the transition timing function property. Thank you, Jason. That is super helpful. In fact, let's just try that really quick. So CSS. Timing. Timing function. Function. Timing dash function. Oh, good. 
All right, we're taking to Mozilla, also a good site to, to track down some fun stuff. Oh yeah, so here, that's linear, so there's no easing in and easing out. Let's try ease. Ooh, so let's do linear. I'm gonna try that and we'll see what that does to the animation. Oh, why didn't that copy? Okay, let's see what this does. I think it's gonna make it not look as good. So you see how it just gets bigger and smaller. Oh, that's still easing in and easing out. Maybe I did something wrong. What is What did you expect it to do? I expected it to move more, more um, basically exactly the same speed the whole time, rather than at the beginning, it kind of starts the animation oh. and then slowly ends the animation. That's easing. Um, but you can see here with this animation, it has none of that. It just starts and stops at the same speed. Yeah. Right? And then when we use this one, there's an ease. I see. And then this one steps. Whoa. No one wants that. No one wants that. Let's try it out. I want to see if I can get it to work. <laughs> steps. Jason, are we doing this right? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I am. Let us know. This is what I get for live coding. No, I'm not doing it right. Something's <laughs> wrong. Okay, more research is required. Don't you worry. Research is required. Mm -hmm. We'll get to it. Um. Oh, it's like typing. Yeah, you could do that for, if you were animating typing, you could certainly do that, the step one. Yeah, that's true. I probably just... I mean, I'm sure someone wants it. It doesn't work for our fun oh, thing. Oh, okay. I actually have to get into adding the values. Oh, you have to be more granular with that. Yeah, okay. So let's try this one. And see if that works. Okay, I have no idea what this is going to do. Yep. It worked. Actually, I like this. It's kind of I'm fun. totally flipping on what I said. It's kind of fun. <laughs> it is kind of fun. So I think we can define. This is if you want to prevent someone from buying something on your website. Yes. <laughs> you do this and they're like, what? And they're trying to find where to click and it just keeps moving. So we can define how many steps and then we can also change the timing. So let's, what happens when we do it one second? Whoa. Hmm. Okay, that is kind of fun. That is pretty cool. Okay, well, that pretty much brings <laughs> us to the end of our... Wade was feeling sorry for the steps because I was bashing them. Oh. But it well, turns we, out we, figured it we out. shouldn't have judged them so much. Yay, steps, you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of this tutorial for variable fonts on the web. If you have any questions, please reach out. Um, and then, yes, follow us on behance.net at Adobe Fonts. We post all past episodes there and all new episodes will be announced there before they go live. There's a lot of evergreen stuff on there. You can, again, message us directly on there if you have questions or ideas for episodes or anything else. That would be fantastic. And follow us there, too, because it's great. And uh, you'll get notified yeah. of all new episodes. And we're, we surpassed the thousand followers recently. We did. We have to do so. a thousand follower uh, celebration episode. Yes. Yeah, we'll do that. Thank you all for following us. Yes, follow us. Keep following us so we can keep celebrating. Yes. We love the fonts love. Yeah, let's get to 2000 way faster than we got to 1000. You know what I'm saying? I hope um, so. And then if you have any ideas or thoughts about the Adobe Fonts service or things that you would like to see, go to adobefonts.uservoice.com. There are questions. Uh, there are already features and ideas and questions that are there, and you can upload them and downvote them, and our product team looks at that and makes decisions based on what is coming in the future from the feedback that we get there. So that would be fantastic. Check it out. Yeah. And yeah, we'll, we'll uh, see you next time. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Ari, it was good to see you. 
great to see and, you. Uh, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, Thank everyone. Thank you for that great tutorial and live experimentation. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.